All right, boys, we're gonna take this amplifier right here. It is a kind of a funky combination of a Bassman and a JTM45, um, and I want to modify it. It currently has a tube rectifier, and I wanna change it to solid state diodes. I've got a couple reasons. Number one, um, tonally, I wanna explore what that would do to it, both in terms of tone and feel. In theory, a tube rectifier will be slightly more spongy and saggy. A solid state rectifier would be a little bit more quick and immediate. Uh, tight, maybe, would be the feel. I think feel more than tone. Um, additionally, the tube rectifier that's currently in it, I think, is malfunctioning. Uh, last time I had it out at a gig, it was doing really weird things, uh, which, you know, it's like sputtering and um, making kind of weird noisy sounds, which I attributed to... Um, a bad rectifier tube. So I think the rectifier went dead. So I'm going to go to solid state diodes. Let's uh, pop this boy open and see what we have to do to make that happen. First of all, I want to make you aware I've pulled the tubes out. My amplifier is not plugged in. I've also used my discharge tool to uh, take all the voltage from the filter capacitors and um, bleed it all to ground. And then lastly, I took a digital multimeter and I have tested the filter caps, which are right here, to ensure that there is no DC or AC voltage of any kind in the amplifier circuit. If you are not comfortable taking those steps and ensuring that this amplifier is safe for you to work on, then you should instead bring this to a qualified technician and have it done professionally. Now you can see here just to test it again, I currently have 24 volts DC on this node here, so I'm gonna do take my filter cap draining tool again and give it another drain. So you can see right there I got 24 volts. If I take this tool, you can see it is draining the voltage down. All right, 15. The tool is over here. So the tool, one part is clipped onto my chassis, the other part is touching that uh, resistor on the voltage supply, and there's a resistor in between just to slow the flow of current as the remaining voltage seeps to ground. So now that I know this amplifier is completely safe to work on, let's dive in. Okay, so right here is my rectifier tube. You can see I've got two yellow leads from the power transformer, and I got two red leads here from the um, also from the power transformer. Next, I've got a schematic here. This is from a basement. You can see the high voltage leads goes into the plates of the GZ34 tube rectifier, and then the filaments. There's also a line there, and then the filaments here feed up to this line which is where your high voltage B plus goes. So what's happening is the high voltage AC comes into the plates of the rectifier tube. It acts like a diode, modifies it to DC, which will come out of the filament and then onward. So the filament, we know that's the filament down here because first of all, on the schematic, that's the symbol. But second of all, um, we know that's, that's where your, your low voltage uh, heater supply has got to go into these tubes. So we've got, in this case, I know that this yellow wire here goes over to my uh, B plus step down circuit. So I know that this yellow wire right here matches this wire that's coming out of the rectifier tube on the cathode. So in summary, high voltage coming into these red wires, our five volt AC for the heaters is going to the yellow wires. The high voltage AC comes to the red wires, it gets rectified through the tube and it exits out the cathode. Okay, so let's summarize what, in fact, we're going to do. Uh, again, we're using the tube socket as a terminal strip, and I'm going to try to be kind of minimally invasive. It's going to be pretty simple. We've got high voltage coming into these two red wires. I'm going to place diodes on each end. Then I'm going to run both those diodes to one of these open terminal strip spots. And then this yellow wire here is the one that goes to the B-plus supply. I'm simply going to move it to the other side where the diodes are tagged down. Leave the five volt windings here, leave the high volt windings here. Pretty simple. Now the diodes I'm choosing to use are these. This is a simple pair of 
1N5408 diodes. These are actually quite over spec, but that is just fine. Now, as far as orientation, all diodes have are directional and they have a white line. I want the high voltage to be here on this side, where there is no line, and then I want the output going into the circuit to be on this side, where there is the white line. Now this is a schematic of a 1987X Marshall, so like the Plexi. The, well, this is what the basement and the JTM45 evolved into. On these lines here, we've got that same high voltage from the power transformer. You can see the leads both connect up here and then go to the B+. Same layout as with the tube rectifier. And again, you can see that the line is on this side. So now in this schematic, they're using a pair of 1N4007 diodes and they're using the pair just for redundancy. So if one were to blow, then the second one could be as a backup. Um, I am not going to do that. I feel like this, these single 1N5408 uh, diodes are um, going to be sufficient and I'm comfortable using them just in a single line. But you certainly could follow this and use these two 1N407s. You can even do so. I've even seen three in a line. Uh, it just adds protection in case one were to die. <laughs> I'm actually not really liking what I'm seeing out of this tube socket. It looks a little bit janky. And uh, part of it cracked off right here. We're gonna, I am gonna use it as a terminal strip as previously said, but I'm gonna flip it over to another one. So with this mod, this will, you can't put a tube rectifier in here anymore. <laughs> We've got the two red wires, two diodes, liner on this side, V plus wire going into the circuit. I got an IEC power cord running into this. This is a light bulb current limiter. I got no tubes installed. All right, so I'm going to flip the power cord on. You should be a flash, see a flash of light from the light bulb as that onrush of current spikes, and then it should go back down. I've got my voltmeter on AC. Okay, 384 AC, that's good. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to switch my voltmeter to volts DC and move my probe here to the tab where it gets rectified. We're pushing 500 some volts there, but so that all seems fine. Yeah, we got some DC volts there on the B plus line, so that all looks good mod has been successful. I'm going to put a, a load on the output transformer, a speaker cab and a speaker cable, and then uh, I'm going to do output tubes, make sure everything's good, then preamp tubes, make sure everything's good. Well, I'm getting a little freaked out because I turn the amp on, a little flash, the DC voltage comes up, current is fine, the tubes start to warm up, we're at four, now it's tanking, voltage is dropping. Okay. I 
I think it's okay. I, I can't tell if the light bulb current limiter is acting a little funky or what. Maybe the bias of the tubes is way off. Okay, I've got the positive lead connected to pin 3, which is the plate. The black lead is connected to pin 8, which is the cathode. freaks me out that the voltage spikes up high and then settles down. Okay, I've got the amp on for a minute. My plate to cathode voltage has settled into this 374 volts. So we got Rob Robinette's tube bias calculator. So I put my plate to cathode voltage right here, 374 volts. We got 606 GCs at 30 watts. I calculate we're looking right here, class AB fixed bias, our 60 per net cent average would be 48.1 milliamps. So let's shift the leads on my probe. All right, I just fired the amp back up. I have on the cathodes, I'm running into a one ohm resistor. The two bias calculator told me I want 41 milliamps. I've got a tiny little screwdriver in here to adjust this trim pot. Okay, 41.3. Turn the amp off just for kicks. I'm going to read the resistance on that resistor. As the DC volts dissipates. I want this thing to be right at 1 ohm. Now, to be honest, I don't even know how accurate this multimeter is, but it is currently reading right at 1 ohm. So I'm going to trust it. Okay, so I believe I've currently got this puppy biased. Um, let's plug a guitar in. All right, I got a guitar plugged in. I'm gonna run the amp really low volumes because it's nighttime and my kids are sleeping. I just wanna see if this thing makes noise. Ha <laughs> ha!
All right, there you have it, guys. The amplifier has been transformed from a tube rectifier to a solid state rectifier. In my opinion with this, the change in the difference is subtle. It's a feel-based thing, and it's not necessarily a tone thing that you're hearing. It's not shaping the tone or the distortion in an extreme way. It's more of a feel thing. It's a little bit quicker and more immediate on the pick attack, and just the way that the notes kind of spring into life, it's a little bit stiffer, quicker, more immediate, more immediate responsive rather than having just a touch of like sagging. But on the flip side, it still sounds like a like a plexi. You know, JTM45, we're still in that world. It still sounds like that kind of amp. I think it sounds really good. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I, solid state diodes are really cheap. They're really reliable. And, um, you know, frankly, tubes are a little bit finicky. So I tend to favor solid state diodes just because um, they do the job really well. And I don't know if I really buy into a lot of the mojo of the tube rectifiers. Certainly, you're welcome to have your own opinions if you really love them. That's excellent. But for me, I'm really happy to have solid state diodes in this amp. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.